were most likely to pass the bar exam. <laughs> and those who didn't get good grades were most likely to fail. As a reliable predictor of bar passage, Father Moore was explaining the statistics to me because some of that stuff is just befuddling to me. He said, it was like a statistical home run. No other professor's grades came anywhere close to this. I mean, he gave me the statistical numbers and my head started hurting, but literally it was just, he said, nobody came close. He indicated maybe it's because my father paid so much attention to the current state of the laws and his analysis, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, I thought that, um, I thought that that was just really interesting. You know, my father, how some people say my father could identify the issues and identify the analysis, and uh, I thought that was worth sharing. Um, Justice Lemon, who spoke so beautifully a few minutes ago, shared some thoughts. Uh, he wrote a dedication. Uh, he gave a speech when my father retired. Um, the following year, it was published in Loyola's Law Review. Um, at that time, or just before the, giving the speech, he asked members um, of the bench and bar to give comments, uh, and he shared those comments at the time and published them in the Law Review. Uh, there are many in there that I, I'm not going to mention, but um, I do want to uh, give one quote. I want to quote Mr. Uh, Judge Justice Lemon, where he said that Bill taught me to remember always that the legal issues decided by judges critically affect the lives of human beings and that the brilliance or the incompetence or indifference of lawyers advocating clients' causes should never detract from a judge's according justice to the clients. Um, many of uh, the lawyers in, this, uh, in our community today might not remember um, uh, a couple of people I quote, but I just want to uh, quote them and then I'll, I'll, I'll conclude. Uh, Russ Herman who is still one of the um, finest examples of a trial lawyer that I've ever known and was a friend of my father's. Uh, he's a past president of the Louisiana Trial Lawyers, now Louisiana Association for Justice. He, he shared this. What can, uh, this is back in 1987, 88. What can and should be said of William B. Redmond, Chief Judge of the Louisiana Fourth Circuit Court of Appeal upon his retirement, is that he will always be remembered as a good and decent man who dispensed justice in accord with a deep commitment to the morality and ethic of an abiding conscience. For us, we've always been unanimous in our feelings about the judge, his sterling character, his dedication to duty and his community, his willingness to hear with an open mind and heart, his application of law in an impartial manner and his personal integrity have served to elevate the stature of the bench and the spirit of a bar which has had the distinct pleasure to appear before him. Uh, I remember uh, H. Martin Hunley, uh, a preeminent member of the defense bar, no longer with us. He wrote that Judge Redmond has contributed to the bench and the bar throughout his tenure as a judge, and before that as a lawyer, an intellectual element as well as one of integrity and scholarship which will cause all of us who had the good fortune to come into contact with him to regret his departure and hope and to expect that he will continue to bring honor and respect to our profession. A sense of responsibility for brevity impels me to ref refrain from commenting at great length, as I would like to do, on the great respect which Judge Redmond's conduct on the bench and at the bar is held by my fellow lawyers. But I will say, without fear of contradiction, that he will be remembered as one of the great judges who has graced the bench in the history of Louisiana. Um, finally, Paul Beyer. Uh, uh, revered law professor at LSU um, uh, wrote a piece uh, uh, also quoted by Justice Lemon and uh, I'll finish with that. Paul Beyer wrote uh, in a piece called A Sprig of Laurel for, for Chief Judge uh, Redmond, the other day I heard a plotting lawyer say that a certain opinion of the chiefs was cryptic. What this uninspired mind failed to grasp was the hand of a master at his art. An opinion should be quasi oral, should be a quasi oral utterance, not an encyclopedia of regurgitation. If I may avouch Holmes as witness, quote, the bench and bar have the right to expect of each other that they should assume their discourse to be directed to masters of the business. 
Bill Redmond's tall figure, his lean style, and his boyish wit have always reminded me of Holmes. The old man himself was once accused of judicial obfuscation by a complaining law clerk. There's not a man in a thousand who will understand your opinion, carped the clerk. Holmes shot back, Sonny, I write for that man. To conclude, we thank the Fourth Circuit, in particular, Judge Roland Belsom, who reached out and took special effort to help us finally get the portrait uh, realized and the ceremony in place. It was a special blessing that uh, before my mother passed away less than two years ago that she got to see the portrait completed. Here in this courtroom, uh, she met the artist and saw the painting and even got to say, you know, the eyes need to be a little bit this way. Um, um, she, she was so delighted. She had tears when she saw it. Uh, she knew that the painting was going to be on the wall. That was something that she really wanted to see happen. Um, thanks to my family, in particular, uh, my sister, Attorney Maria Redmond Treffinger, who worked so hard in everything that was involved in making this happen. Uh, my uh, devoted uh, team at my law office, including my office manager, Ruth Kaloyan, who has uh, bent over backwards to do what's necessary to try and put this all together. And, um, and to all of you for taking time on a work day to be here. Uh, I, I close with a quote from Rudyard, excuse me, from Charles Dickens, an author my father enjoyed, uh, that I think reflects the comments that we've heard today. Whatever I have tried to do in life, I have tried with all my heart to do it well. Whatever I have devoted myself to, I have devoted myself completely. In great aims and in small, I have always thoroughly been in earnest. Um, at this time, thank you very much. At this time, we'll do the unveiling.